Ms. Oliver, you say that the plaintiff knocked the phone out of your hand? Correct. And what happened after that? After he knocked the phone out of my hand, he looked into the street. He seen the phone laying in the street. He ran over to my ran phone. Ran over. He ran over to my phone because he's trying to get my phone before me. So after he runs over to my phone, then he kicks my phone. You don't remember that. You have no recollection of that. That's, the adrenaline that's a was, complete was fiction. Rushing. Because it's yelling, it's screaming, it's, it's cursing. It, you, it's, you gotta watch out for someone trying to hit you. Uh, the, you know, we, had, we were on defense the whole time. Okay. So we called the police. Yeah, but the question was, did you kick her phone? Did you stomp I, on her phone? I do I not recall her you even don't, having don't a phone. There's a difference between I didn't do that and I don't recall. And what I'm hearing you say is I don't recall. We'll take that. This is a picture of the phone. This is exhibit C, the defendant's phone. I have another question for you, sir. What happened when you reported this accident to your insurance? Um, my insurance company, after I did my research, they did their research and determined, they gave me a paper determined I was not at fault. And um, here we are. I have not... Why I are have you not... suing for damages to the vehicle? It's my wife's vehicle. It's not my vehicle. Was it covered by insurance? Yes. Okay, and that insurance company would not cover your medical damages. They covered the they... damages to the car. Okay. I not was not involved in their litigation. So once I got involved, Ugh. they were they kept telling me the case is closed. Why did they close the case when you said, I've got $9,000 in medical bills from this accident, right. where you paid out for the car? No, it was, okay, the situation is this. They deem no one responsible. This is what I know. They gave me forms uh, uh, okay. uh, confirming that. So if, if they are saying that, um, I'm not, if no one was at fault, then their own insurance companies had to take on their liability. Do you have proof that they determined you to not be at fault? Show me yes. where that document is. Yes, so we have here, I mean, exhibit D, which is my insurance company, just stating that we did, um... Wait a minute, no. This letter says claimant opened door as insured drove past. Right. That's her insurance company. This is the letter from, from whoever's representing her because they call her the insured. So this does it, not... I know, right? it, it, seems, it seems a little bit confusing. If no, you it, read... It's not actually confusing, it's very no, clear. Ma'am, when it stated the latest, about your, the latest information about your claim, we have determined that you or the driver of your vehicle was 0% at fault. And the other involved drivers were 100% at fault. And then the next line contradicts that. It says the insured was the one who was... Yeah, I did not understand exactly what that said either. If I felt like that was yeah. going to work against yeah. me, I would have brought it. I, well, I think it's up to us to sort it out. I think that's yeah, the problem. Yeah, it's kind of mistyped, misprinted. Now, Ms. Oliver, insurance has already paid for all of the damages to your vehicle, correct? Yes. All right, I have no further questions. All right, thank you both very much. We're going to excuse the parties while we deliberate in this matter. This courtroom is now in recess. Okay, we have deliberated and reached a unanimous verdict. California Vehicle Code makes very clear who is at fault for this accident, and it's the plaintiff. It's you, Mr. Foster. There's a presumption, essentially, under the law that the person who opens their car door is the one responsible for the accident. Now, that sometimes can change if there's some extreme negligence by the other party. If you Certainly, if you drive across lanes into a parked car that happens to have its door open, it's that person's fault. But when a car is parked and the door is opened into traffic, it is incumbent on the driver of the vehicle to ensure that it is safe to have the door open at all times. So we find the plaintiff to be responsible and at fault for this accident, apparently just as the defendant's insurance company did. And therefore, the claim of the plaintiff is dismissed. And Ms. Oliver, we also have to let you know that we considered not awarding you anything because you were driving without a license. Now, we don't believe there's a legal basis to determine that someone driving without a license can't recover if they're not at fault, but you shouldn't be driving without a license. And the fact that you've been doing it for eight years doesn't make it better, it makes it worse. So you're not gonna receive any punitive damages. However, we do believe the evidence showed that the plaintiff swatted the phone out of your hand and you're entitled to receive compensation for that. So the verdict of the court today is to dismiss the plaintiff's claim and award the defendant $800 for the cost of the new phone as a result of the altercation. And that is our judgment.